I want to get over to CNN's Evan Perez, who actually has new reporting just into CNN with regard to the National Archives and hundreds of documents. Evan, what is this? Well, Kate, this is a letter that was posted last night uh, by uh, John Solomon, uh, a conservative journalist, on his website. Uh, and it's a letter from May from the National Archives to uh, representative uh, of former President Trump. And th it's an extraordinary letter because it describes, uh, uh, for the first time now publicly, we can see what NARA says they found when they retrieved those 15 boxes of documents back in January uh, from Mar-a-Lago. It says that there were 700 pages uh, contained. There were 100 pages with classified information, uh, and including information under this very, very sensitive category, the special access programs. This is stuff that even if you have the top security clearance you need additional clearance to be able to to access these type this types of information uh, what the letter really describes though Kate is for the first time we know uh, you know the back and forth that was happening between the National Archives between uh, the Justice Department and the FBI the FBI wanting to go in there and and look at these documents to do an assessment of the security damage from having these documents stored in an unsecure location at the president the former president's beach house and you you see they're giving great deference to former President Trump uh, over a period of weeks, Kate. This is important. I mean, just that sheer scale and number of the number of documents deemed classified, exactly. that's really quite something. Evan, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Joining me right now for more on this is former Trump White House Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. Thanks for being here. You heard the reporting just in from Evan, as I just did. 15 boxes that we know were retrieved from Mar-a-Lago in January, 700 pages, more than 100 documents deemed classified. What do you think of just that number? Well, the number's certainly large. The, the classified is an important part there, Kate. By the way, thanks for having me. Classified covers a whole range of things. There's could be low classifications, medium classifications. There's stuff that's TSSCI, top secret, et cetera. That's the stuff that really catches my attention, including the stuff that is des designated as SAP, special access programs. That's really serious stuff. You can walk off accidentally fairly easily with confidential documents. That's not that a lot of stuff is confidential in, in, in any particular White House. The SAP materials is stuff that you're supposed to sign in for, sign out for, go to a special place to read. It would be very, very difficult to accidentally walk off with those documents. So I'd be curious if we learn any more. We're probably not going to see what those documents are because they're so sensitive. But any information might shed some light on how they ended up in Mar-a-Lago. Because that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, as, from your experience, well, in Congress and your experience in the White House, how easy, how easy would it be or reasonable would it be for someone to believe that these documents would be taken off accidentally, especially these very top classified documents? Well, again, that's two different questions. Classified information, yeah, you could easily throw a bunch of stuff in a, in a box of documents and there might be classified materials in there. Again, classification covers a large, broad sort of variety of documents. TSSCI and SAP is different. Those are documents, for example, that have special covers. Again, with the SAP materials, you typically have to sign in and sign out for them. Also makes me wonder what happened to the chain of custody of these documents. There's supposed to be somebody, typically at the uh, uh, the, the national security, that is uh, John Bolton's office, or actually it was uh, Robert O'Brien's office, that's supposed to track those documents. So uh, the, the large number of documents doesn't necessarily get my attention. Again, it is the, the small number of TSSCI and special access documents that has me scratching my head. Yeah. I want to also ask you about this lawsuit that Trump's team filed asking for a special master to review the documents that were taken in the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago. What do you think of this request? It doesn't surprise me. It sort of telegraphs that the Trump team doesn't trust the FBI. Keep in mind, uh, if you put your Trump hat on and look at this through his perspective, this is the same FBI that presented false information about him to a judge as part of a FISA court uh, investigation into the or surveillance of the 2016 Trump campaign. So there's some very bad blood between the FBI and President Trump. So for them to say, look, we don't want the filter team, which is an internal team to the FBI going through these documents. We want an independent third party master. Why? Because some of these documents, yes, they could be special because he's president. This would be stuff that we covered by executive privilege. 
but there are also maybe material, maybe materials, and I believe they're contending that there are, that would be attorney-client privilege that everybody would be uh, entitled to. So, yeah, there's a low level of trust between the FBI and the Trumps. The motion for the special master does not surprise me. Uh, and my my gut is that it's probably one of the things the court will be able to award the Trump uh, side in this argument. There are a couple things also that stand out in this filing that it, it seems have little to do with this special master request. One of them being the message, seeing like the full breadth of the message that Trump says that was he sent to Attorney General Merrick Garland. They lay it out in the filing. Let me read this for everyone, this part of it. This is the message they said was delivered to the Attorney General. President Trump wants the Attorney General to know that he has been hearing from people all over the country about the raid. If there was one word to describe their mood, it is angry. The heat is building up, the pressure is building up. Whatever I can do to take the heat down to bring the pressure down just let us know what do you think donald trump was trying to say here do you see that message as threatening yeah well, well my guess is that how you interpret that message probably depends in large part about how you perceive uh, former president trump if you don't like him you can see a veiled threat if you like him you can take the document on its face value i sent a text to mark meadows during the january 6 riots and said mark let me know if i can help and my intent was to say, Mark, let me know if I can help. There was no underlying threatening message in that. So I, I take the message at face value. I think you probably should until you get more detail around it. But it wouldn't surprise me that folks who don't like Donald Trump see a veiled threat in that. You know, the filing talks a lot about the storage room in Mar-a-Lago where these documents were kept. During your time as chief, did, did you know about a, a storage room, a storage unit in Mar-a-Lago where documents might have been kept? Well, we didn't store documents there when I, or at least not a lot of them. We would bring documents with us when we go down uh, on the weekends and so forth. There was a basement that I was familiar with that the United States Secret Service used. I'm not sure if that's the same place. What, what, what jumps out of my mind about the storage of the documents at Mar-a-Lago was that the FBI uh, was there in January, I believe, took the first 15 documents that you mentioned earlier, then back again in June and recommended that additional security be placed. What does that tell me? Uh, yeah, you could read that as saying, well, there was not enough security, which is probably a, an arguable point, um, but also that the Trump, Trump team s seems to have done that. So if the FBI was there in January and went back in June and then sent a note about increasing the security, makes me wonder why they didn't do more at that particular time. So no, I don't focus much on, on the building. Um, when we were there, it was different because he was the sitting president. The security was outrageously tight, at least to get on the property. Once you were on the property, you could move around a little bit. And my guess is it's a much lower level of security now. Uh, but the FBI knows a lot more about the security at the building right now than I'm going to. Um, and so I'm really not sure what the, what the issue is on the security at the building itself. Yep. Let me also ask you, because in this filing, um, they make it very clear uh, and they say very clearly that they believe that Donald Trump is not only the front runner um, to, in the 2024 Republican presidential primary, but also the front runner in the 2024 general election, should he decide to run. I mean, he sees himself as a front runner in 2024. Do you, do you want to see him run? Sure. I guess anybody running for president perceives themselves as being the front runner. I know Liz Cheney sees it that way here in the last couple of days. Look, I have been very public. I think that uh, I, uh, the president's policies spoke to me as a conservative and Republican. I was very pleased with the policies that we put in place for the administration. I think we're at the point now where Donald Trump may be the only Republican, if the election were held today, who might lose to Joe Biden. Uh, the, 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 the environment is very favorable to Republicans, and there's any number of them who could beat Joe Biden, in my opinion, fairly easily. Donald Trump would have a difficult time doing that and could, in theory, lose to Joe Biden. So as a Republican, I'm thinking to myself, if I can get the policies that Trump represents without having the baggage that Trump represents, why wouldn't we do that as a party? And I think there's a growing number of Republicans who see things that way. And if he is the nominee, then you're faced with the question of would you have trouble voting for him? Yeah, and I, I get that question all the time. And, it's, you know, in this country, we, we, we vote in secret. And I get it. I don't want to make it about myself. But I can tell you that there's a lot of Republicans who, who really liked him, voted for him twice, hope that he doesn't run again to not put us in that situation. Um, there's some really, really good Republicans out there. Um, and regardless of how this FBI investigation goes, regardless of how the January 6th investigation goes, Donald Trump still embodies a lot of anger uh, on the other side of the aisle that a lot of the Republicans don't. So uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a growing number of Republicans who pursued, prefer to see him not run. There has been a tremendous amount, Kate, of sympathy for him in the last two weeks from all sorts, uh, potential challengers in 2024, critics such as myself, who have defended him uh, in response to this raid. So in a roundabout sort of way, the raid has probably helped him politically, uh, which is one of the great ironies of American politics.